Finnish GP, and it is about to become history. Get ready for the gate drop as history is made in Wales. Oh. First hole shot's gonna go to Roxon. Sabachi got there first. Two oh, back wide. inside. Oh. He's in second, Sabachi's in third on the 17, and here comes the rest of the pack. Well, here they are, the two fastest lap time riders that there have been here today, and once again, they are back out front. It's gonna be all out battle, Roxon out front, Tomac in second. Arguably the two quickest riders in the world, running one and two in GP race number one here in Cardiff. Roxon, Tomac, Sabachi, Brayton, Freezy, the top five right now. The German rider out in front. Eight laps here for race one. Gonna be so quick. It's a little bit longer than the than the heat race. And you gotta wonder also, now that we have seen Roxen uncork the well, let's go back to the start. Savachi probably looks like it's on board with Savachi. He gets in there first, nobody in front of him, but he goes just a little bit wide. And there's Roxen out front. And then Tomac sneaks by also. So, the quad is still in play. That may be what it's going to take for Roxon to win this main event at the end of that rhythm section. So, he just ran the fastest lap so far, Jeff, with a 46.030. Oh, lots. Oh, another rider down. Not sure who that is. Don't forget, Roxon won race number one in the AMA 450 Supercross season opener, the famed Anaheim one this year. He only ran nine races and then stepped away from the series in da after Daytona back in March at Bike Week. That was Jordy Tixie had the French rider that went down with the, oh, there it is, there's the, the quad. quad. And it opens up a gap as you hear the crowd come to life here. So he goes from a so he goes to a 45.7. Oh, oh, oh there's that. Roxon. Unbelievable. He nails the quad and then loses it coming out of a slow corner. Unreal. Just pushing the limits of that genuine Honda. Watch right here. Just loses some traction with that front tire. He's like, oh, no, no, no. He got it. Nope, I don't got it. Just sets the fastest single lap that anyone has set all day long. Cloud 18, Luke Cloud is down. We've yeah. got the Red Cross flags, yellow flags. He's off the track safely. Now roll. the riders have to roll all the jumps through this section. Then after they get past the Red Cross flags, they can jump again. Meanwhile, Tomac checking out as he had the lead just handed to him by Ken Roxon. Oh, and Sabachi's down right at the finish line jump. Well, and that is a very tricky place because he has to go up and over. He has to go up and over that metal ramp. He's going to have to, oh, he's going to go he's back go around, around and try to find a safe. Here he is, right there, second rider in the line there. Oh, he catches. Oh, oh, oh just, there are a couple little acceleration bumps. Where oh, the, how did Brayden get through there? Yeah, I think Brayden had to roll the finish line jump also. Let's go on board. Gets it all wrong, slams down. Meanwhile, Tomac still up front. Seven and a half second lead. Guys, with how hard pack and slick this track has been, riders are having to be patient when they open up the throttle coming out of a transition. Down here where I'm standing in the S turn, you can actually see where there's developing blue group. Riders are trying to time their throttle that way because if they don't, the rear end is kind of slipping out. Well, just, I mean, Tomac has been so good, and it's been Roxon and Savachi here's, that have made the big mistakes. Here's Roxon. He's already caught up to Brayton. Roxon now in fourth. Jeff, how far up can he get? Tomac is trying to check out, but Roxon on Brayton, then Freezy in front of him in second. There's Vince. Well, now here's where the three GP final races, okay? This is where this could come into play and work in Roxon's favor. Roxon looking to get inside on Brayton right here in the bolter. Got it. Put Roxon in third. Okay. Now he sets sail after Freezy. 
So up to third, possibly a second, but then you still have two more races to go. This was one main event, and Tomac checked out, right? Okay, let's take a look. Oh, Cloud oh. over the bars. Oh, man. He collects. Was that Nicoletti? Uh, no, Nicoletti in the two shot. two cars. I'm going to have to take a look and see which one of the club and mechs ride up. Is it Clayson or Harlan, one of them? Roxon, though. He's back at it. He's focused. Yeah, he's, he's catching up to Freezy as well. And, and he quads it again. And he's got it dialed, Ralph. He that does. That time was clean. And you he's can see how much down. ground he gained on Freezy as well. So Roxon just set the fastest lap by about a second over anyone else. But we've said all night long that Vince Freezy is not easy to pass. He does not give up quickly. He's going to fight for everything here. Yeah, Let's last, see. So last lap, if you're Roxon, Second is as good as the first in this one. It really is. And he's got the speed on Freezy. Let's see if he skims the whoops, goes wide. Maybe he uses the quad again. If he quads, he needs to jump to the inside, which is really risky. Here's Tomac. With a five-second lead on Freezy. Checkered flag. And it's going to be... Tomac, Freezy, and Roxon in that order. So Roxon runs out of time, doesn't get a shot at Freezy. And instead of getting that much needed second, he's going to have to settle for third here in GP race number one. Yeah, and Tomac was up to a seven and a half second lead. He obviously backed it down a little bit. It was only four and a half at the end. But I'm really impressed with the rider in third, Ken Roxon. What a way after making that small mistake. He really has, he, like, he's fast down the track. Boy, was he ever. And the wild card rider, Eli Tomac on that star racing Yamaha, ends up taking the win in GP race. Here we go. Race number two underway. Roxon again trying to get the whole shot. Guarding that inside line. He's Freezy. got it once again. Oh, it's going to be Freezy. You're right. Super the Ross in there. Where's Roxon? Freddie Noren also on the Suzuki right there. The 61 with another good start. There's Roxon deeper in the field on the 94, right alongside of Tomac. Those two battling for the overall win as well as a win here in race number two. Once again, eight laps. Tomac trying to pull away and move up to yes. the field. Put a couple of riders between him and Ken. Got past the Scoffier, the French rider, so that's going to put Tomac up to fourth. Roxon gets by. I mean, they're here for business. To me, Tomac and Roxon, are the, they are the guys to be here tonight. Now they find themselves, they have to do something they haven't done yet, and that's work their way through the pack while being wheel to wheel, okay? They're the guys to beat tonight and everywhere else they show up, Jeff. And how about Freezy, second in that race one? Here's your start of the replay of the start. Wow. Kind of makes you a little dizzy right there. Freezy out in front of Subaross, Tomac, and Roxon. And then Brayton rounding out the top five. Brayton right there. Fastest lap, Roxon that time around was a 47.0. Subaross on the Kawasaki. Oh, Roxon going after Tomac. Subaross trying to make the move on Freezy right now. Look out, oh, he goes right up oh, next to him. Oh, oh. Doesn't get into him, got uh, right up alongside. Subaross, you ride with him through the rhythm lane. Can he get inside? Here comes Tomac. He's going to go after Subaross. Cedric with his hands full right here. Vince Freezy has never won anything, Jeff, in the Premier Class except six last oh. chance qualifiers. Can he win race number two here at the British GP? Let's see if Subaross can hold Tomac off. No, Tomac goes by through the rhythm section. Tomac caught, or he, I caught him looking over his right uh, shoulder. He wants to know where Roxon's at. Freezy's going to protect this. His shot at the biggest win of his career, just halfway away. Eight laps, four of them to go. Here comes Tomac chasing after Vince Freezy. Freezy knows he's there. Protecting the inside line, forcing Tomac to the outside. Tomac to the inside, he's got it. Yep. Oh no, oh, he no. gets Freezy comes back. Hits 
the two tabletops and back into the lead goes Vince Breezy. Here comes Roxon. Is he going to quad to the inside and put himself into third? Oh, he slams Super Ross. Breezy trying to maintain the lead. Trying to make that Honda as wide as he can. Tomek says, not wide enough, Vince. Here he comes past. The number three is back into the lead here in Cardiff. Now, how about Roxon? There he sits on the 94. He's up next for Freezy to deal with. Okay, so now Tomac's got a clear track. See, he, Freezy not jumping that quad out that turn. That's going to cost him a little bit. Now, can Roxon uncork the quad at the end of the rhythm section before the finish line turn? Can he jump it to the inside, or does he have to go wide? Switches back to Freezy's. Oh, no, he's just going to try to go for the quad. But he tries to go inside, and he's got him. Roxon moves up to second. Now, does he have anything for Tomac? Just a couple laps remaining here in race number two. Tomac and Roxon run one and two. Oh, look at these inside lines right here. Roxon going inside, inside. He hasn't done that on that. So skatey, so slippery right there. Tomac out front. He's got a clear track, but Roxon has shown that he can set the fastest lap time. And now is when he needs to uncork that quad, Jeff. Next couple of laps, he's going to have to do it each time through there. He wants a shot at Tomac, who hasn't done the quad yet tonight, right? Yeah, and it's, it, you know, you, it, does he need to do it to win? We're going to find out right here. Triple, here we go. Seat bounce, boom. He did it. The fans here in Cardiff are loving it. They're just responding on that side of the stadium. They're just loving it. So now we look at the lap times. Last lap, Tomac was a 46 flat, Roxon a 46.4, even jumping that. Now, is it these line choice on these flat turns? Is it something else that Tomac is doing? He's pulling away still. See it. Roxon decides to send it on the quad again this time. Full commitment out of Ken Roxon here tonight, no doubt about it. Here's your point standings. Tomac leads it by run. seven over Roxon as they run. Ken needs to win this one if he wants a shot at the overall British GP win. Well, and the problem, Ralph, is that he's doing all the obstacles on the track that he needs to do. So where do you make up time? Well, you make up time in all the, in all the turns in the flat sections, but that's where it's the most dangerous. That's where it's the easiest to make a mistake. Once you lean the bike over, you get on the side of the tire. That's when you push the front end like he did. That's when you accelerate and slide out exiting a turn. So right now, Tomek has put himself in a position where he, he doesn't have to do anything special. Roxon has to do something special if he wants to get back in it here because Tomac uh, is on working on a perfect, perfect GP here. He's mistake free, and that's been the difference for Eli. He's fast, obviously, but the mistake free runs making all the difference. As Tomac takes the checkers once again here in GP race number two. He has been perfect so far in the GPs. Well, he's just been mistake free, but he had to work for that one. Didn't get the start he needed, but a bad start in the third and final race could really cost Tomac big time, especially if Roxon gets out front. Wow. Eli Tomac, star racing Yamaha rider on the wild card entry. Leading it all so far as he swept the first two GP races here in Cardiff tonight. Tomac, Roxon, Freezy, Subaros with a nice run to fourth, and Savachi will take a top five. Here's your replay, Jeff, as we get this one. All right, there goes the 30-second board sideways. Get ready. Anytime within five seconds, we're ready to drop the game. Tomac trying to get the whole shot. He's in front of Roxon. He will not be the first one to the whole shot line. That'll be Brayton. Brayton is in front. Here he comes, oh, and Freezy gets a wheel in front of Tomac. Oh, and you got to wonder, where is Ken Roxon, number 94 in the genuine Honda? Savachi right alongside on the 17. Oh, Roxon's 10. Way back. 10. Oh, man, he's got a lot of work to do, Jeff. A lot of work. Yeah, yeah, but Brayton and Freezy, with those Moto Concept Hondas out front, they have been looking great. Is it possible that one of them take the win here in this 12-lap Super Final? A little bit longer, four more laps to go.
Well, the one thing we know is an extra couple of laps won't hurt Tomac. He is as fit as any athlete in the world oh, on our bike. And look at everybody just inside, inside through this S turn section. My, my, how it has changed from Looks like Ryan, thing, qualifying crowd. Here comes Tomac. Ryan Brees was one of the riders down in there. Freezy back inside, not done yet. Tomac has to battle along on the outside. Beat him through that whoop section to get the position back from him. That'll move Tomac into second, and he's got Brayton, the Daytona winner now, in front of him. Savacci Escoffier round out the top five. Rocks it up to seventh. He's going to have some more time to work through the pack here, but unless he makes something happen quickly, or Brayton is really stingy with his lead, Tomac has shown he has the ability to go to the front and check out. Savachi, Savachi trying it up, not quite close enough to Freezy. Notice the different line here. You've got Brayton jumping through the whoops, Tomac skimming across the tops of the whoops. Neither one of these riders. Uh -oh. Tomac inside, new leader. That was just too easy. I got to be critical. Like, come on, Brayton, this is for the win. You know, he just left the door wide open. And that's one thing about this track here tonight. It's about three feet wider than most Supercross tracks. So those 180 degree turns, like right here, it's just wide open, just so much room to execute the block pass like Tomac did right there. Well, and to Eli's credit, he has a lot of respect for Jake, for Justin. He ran him deep up into there, but he didn't get into it, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, you gotta wonder. Maybe Brayton's like, look, I'm trying to stay in my comfort zone. There's one main event left here, one race. Uh, just want to keep it safe. I want to be consistent. And here comes Roxon, number 94, up on the inside here. It's around a Scoffier. He's got a long ways to go yet. Well, so Roxon now six and a half seconds behind your leader, Tomac. Closing in on the halfway point to race three. But Jeff, look how tight it all is. I mean, Jeff, this night it started off so well for Ken Roxon, winning his E race, winning the Super Bowl. He looked like he was going to be the guy to beat here tonight. And it just all came apart in that first GP race. It, it did. And maybe it changed the mindset a little bit, but also the starts. This is part of these Grand Prix races by having three final races, right? Three that that make up the GP. Um, you have to be great off of each and every start. You can't just rely on just, you know, it's not just one time you got to execute it, but it's three in a row. Short turnaround for each time. It's going to give everybody a lot to think about as they get ready to go to Melbourne next in two weeks. And look, look where the points are at. As they run, Freezy is in a position will be second. You talk about consistency, and Vince has had that, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. Brayton's last podium in a World Supercross race was a third at Houston in 2021, and he might pull it off here tonight in Cardiff, Wales. There he is. So Roxon has made up a little bit of time on your leader, like three tenths of a second, but just, just not enough. Savachi trying to get a third here in the super final. On board here with Subaras. Cedric's had a pretty good night all the way around, hasn't he? Yeah, I would say so. Solid night running, for the running, French running Rocks. seventh right now. A very successful racing Supercross in France. I'm not sure if you fans watching at home caught that, but watch what uh, Tomac does when he hits that big 75 foot triple. With his left hand, he actually takes it off the grip and adjusts his clutch. So it adjusts the, the play or how the clutch works. And uh, so has that set up nicely. Clutches and rear brakes uh, really get tested here in World Championship Supercross. Look how close this is. Brayton and Sabachi, they're only three seconds separate Tomac, Brayton, and Sabachi. And Savacci going for a career best finish in World Supercross competition. His best so far to date was a fourth in Minneapolis in 2019. And to clarify,
clarify a little bit more, Jeff, as we watch Savachi catching up to Brayden here in this battle for second. The World Supercross Championship has been around for a while. It was a part of the AMA and FIM World Supercross Championship in the United States. They would run two races in Canada and uh, for many years, and that qualified it as a world championship. The difference now is this is the first time the series is actually going fully global and around the world. That's the big difference that yeah, we're doing here tonight. Big difference. That's why so, it's history. It's a whole new beginning and with about a little less than three laps to go here. Tomac doesn't have a very big lead, but he's on his way to sweeping this thing, Ralph. He sure is. I, I didn't predict that. I mean, obviously, Tomac's the favorite coming in, but I'm saying because as good as Roxon's been, as fast as Roxon's been on that genuine Honda, I, I, I didn't think he'd win every race. I thought, I'm like you, I thought Kenny might steal one away from him. But boy, what a year Eli Tomac is having. It is just incredible. It is one for the history books and the memories. All right, three to go. Savachi fighting really hard to steal second away. See that blue flag waving? That's the FIM official. That blue flag signifies that uh, to the riders out there, the riders are, are further down in the order that they're being lapped by the lead group that comes around. Quick guys coming through, and Breen really pushing it through here. He knows Savachi's on his tail. Only a couple of laps remaining here at the British Grand Prix for 2022. Roxon's made his way past Freezy. You're going to see him just on the right side of your screen. Coming into view right about there. What can Joey do on Brayden here? Over the finish line jump. And two to go. Brayden's riding that wide bike, being really stingy with those inside lines. Well, he's not giving him up as easy as he did to Tomac earlier, is he? Nah, don't leave the door open, that's for sure. Really slippery track. A couple of ruts out there, really easy to make a mistake. Tomac out front, he is so focused. Savachi fighting hard for Rick Ware racing. That white machine running third, trying to get past the Moto Concepts Honda of Brayton. Oh, did he leave the door open? Nope. Oh, so here we go. inside! Takes him high, and he's now looped himself into second place in front of Justin Brayton. That was a good move. He just stayed on Brayton, just kept the pressure on, and uh, Brayton, once again, just leave the door open just a tad bit right there. Last so lap. He took advantage of it. Last lap here at the British Grand Prix. Eli Tomac has run all three Grand Prix races perfectly here tonight. Yeah, taking a little look over at the crowd, the fans here in Cardiff. I mean, it, gotta think this is the best Supercross rider in the world at this point. No doubt, maybe the best dirt bike rider in the world, period. Yeah, he's proved it. For Eli Tomac, he will have his 38th career win in World Supercross competition as he takes the victory here at the British Grand Prix. He is fourth all time behind James Stewart with 51, Chad Reed with 44, Ryan Villapoto with 41, and just in front of the great Ryan Dungey who has 34. See a lot of camaraderie and respect for each other right there. Between the riders, I mean, Tomac, what a role he's been on. He, he, he's never gonna forget 2022. He's That's not going to want it to end, I can <laughs> yeah. tell you that. Right? Right? He's the only guy who's going to hate seeing New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Right there. And he knows he had to deal with Ken Roxon. Ken was tough all night long. If it wasn't for that one little mistake, it might have been a different outcome for Kenny Roxon here tonight in Cardiff. Eli Tomac, the American who comes over as a wild card, brings his star racing Yamaha, this monster back machine with him. He takes the win. Joey Savacci gets second for Rick Ware. What a great night for Rick Ware racing. Oh, yeah, just unbelievable. Win the SX2, have, have another podium here in the, in the uh, World Championship. And we go right to Kristen.